A few videos ago, we looked at the infer keyword in TypeScript, and we looked at four ways that you can use infer to pull one type out of another type. One of the examples that we looked at was using the infer keyword with template literal string syntax. Now, there are a bunch of type challenges that involve using the infer keyword with that template literal string syntax, and we're going to take a look at a bunch of these today. This is going to be a lightning round through eight different type challenges, and hopefully looking at these will give you some inspiration on how you might be able to use template literal string syntax and the infer keyword in some of your own types. So let's take a look at these TypeScript challenges. The first one here is a trim left. The idea is that we have a string with some white space. We're including both space characters, new lines, and tab characters, and we want to trim them only from the left. Let's create a type called WS that is white space, and this is going to be a union type of all of the white space characters that we want to get rid of. So then we want to match anything where those characters are on the left side of the string. So let's do S, which is our string. We're going to check to see if it extends anything where there's white space first, and then let's infer the rest of the string. Now remember, white space here is only going to match a single character, so we're going to want to recurse here. So we'll do another trim left, and we will pass in the rest. And then when there's nothing left to trim, we know that S will be our trimmed string. I'm going to copy these because now we're going to move on to trim right. And as you might expect, trim right is pretty similar to trim left. Instead, though, I'm going to copy this. We're going to match the white space second. Let's remove our white space from the front, put it on the back, and we'll recurse by calling trim right. And now you can see we're trimming off the right. Now we can move on to the third challenge, which is just trim. And I'm going to paste in those other types and let's see if we can use those. In the previous infer video, we actually implemented trim and you can kind of see how we can do the same thing where we can check for white space at the beginning and then at the end and then return the final trimmed string. But since we have trim left and trim right already, why not use them in a creative combination here? So we can do trim left, trim right, and S. And if we combine those together, we have a perfect trim function. The next one is kind of a variation on this. It's a replace. The idea is that we have a string and we want to replace from type with to type. One thing we want to check, I think, first is to let's confirm that from is not an empty string. So if from extends an empty string, then we should just return our original string. But if it doesn't, then we're going to have to do some inferring. Now, one thing to note here is that this replace type only replaces the first value of the type that it finds. So for example, when our string is foo bar bar and we're replacing bar with foo, you can see the expected output is foo foo bar. So we're not going to have the same recursion here. So let's check to see if s extends and we're going to find, uh, let's infer a prefix. Then we have our from, and then let's infer a suffix here, which is just some kind of text at the end. And if we do match that pattern, our response should be uh, the prefix followed by the two followed by the suffix. If none of that matches, then we should just return our string. All right, and there you go. You can see replace is a pretty straightforward thing. We're just going to replace the first one that we find. Now, let's copy this and move it over here to our replace all. Replace all is interesting because we want to replace the same thing multiple times. So let me drop the first replace all here and rename this. The interesting thing about this replace all is that when we match our pattern here, finding the from somewhere in the middle, the idea is that we want to then check to see if there's any more occurrences of from in the prefix or in the suffix. So we can just recurse in here, replace all with our prefix here, and then we can also do a replace all with our suffix here. And with that, we can be sure that we'll have no more occurrences of from within our string. And you can see that all of our tests are passing. Also, once you have the idea of this pattern in your mind, it's, it's not that challenging. But what's interesting, I think, here is the different ways that we combine it. We're sometimes doing one recursion. In this case, we're doing two different branches of recursion within the same type. So replace all will, at least on the first round, call itself twice. Uh, assuming that it does find something to replace. And so I hope this gives you an idea for the flexibility of this type of type. I'm going to copy all of replace all because it's going to be useful in our next one here, which is drop character. The idea here is that we want to drop a particular character from a string. Well, that's just a special case for replace all, isn't it? So you can see we have this drop character here where we have our original string and the character that we want to drop. We can say that drop character 
is a replace all with s as our string, c as our from value, and empty string as our to value. Now this is gonna complain a bit because replace all expects s and from to be strings. So let's say that drop character of s uh, extends string and c also extends string. But if we do that, then we can see we're now dropping whatever character we choose and replacing it with nothing. We're already six types down. The last two types use the same ideas, but instead of returning a new string type, they return a Boolean. First, we'll do starts with, and I think you can probably guess what's coming next. But the idea with starts with is it takes two string literal types and checks to see if the second one is the beginning portion of the first one. So we have T, which is our whole string, and U, which is our expected substring. So we can check to see if T extends a template literal string that starts with U, and then let's infer something else at the end. It doesn't matter what. And if it does start with U, then we return true. And if not, we return false. It's that easy. The interesting thing to keep in mind here is although this looks like a ternary expression where the true branch is true and the false branch is false, it's not exactly the same. What I mean by that is we can't remove this last section of the type and expect that our T extends statement to actually resolve to true or false. So we do need to include true and false there. But as you can see, this passes our tests. Now, I'm pretty sure you can guess how we're gonna do this with ends with. If I paste this in as a comparison, you can probably guess that we're gonna do T extends and we're gonna infer some starter and then expect you at the end. And if that's the case, true, otherwise false. As you can see, this passes our tests as well. All right, so in this lightning round, we covered eight different TypeScript challenges that use the infer keyword and the template literal string syntax. I hope you have a better understanding of this pattern now. Thanks for watching.